Hello everyone, tonight as you can see I've got the Takashi set up behind me ready for its first light and uh, fairly basic plus light pieces and one or two of a slightly better mid-range eyepieces but I do plan on increasing my range and getting a, a few more eyepieces that are a bit higher quality to suit such a nice telescope as the Takashi FC100DC that's uh, set up on the EQ5 behind me there. So I've got it roughly polar aligned so if I want to flick the motor drive on for tracking and uh, let's go and have a look, see what we can see for first light. Oh, there's Vega. Let's get in the middle of the 25mm plus. Oh. It's almost like a 3D effect because you can see such pinprick tiny stars on the edge of your visibility. And then the bright stars almost seem like they're in the foreground. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's superb. But let's pump up the magnification. Let's stick the 12.5 mil Stella Lyra in there. So 12.5 mil and a 740 mil scope. That's gonna be about, around about 60-ish. But I'll put up the exact magnification on the, the screen. I can see the ring nebula with direct vision. It's better with averted vision, but I can see it with direct vision, which is pretty good going for a four inch refractor under my skies. The main thing is that the stars in the background of the ring nebula are pit little pinpricks and uh, this gives the, the view quite a lot of depth, but I can imagine if I get some dark adapted vision going over the next sort of 10 minutes or so, it's just going to get better and better. It's certainly uh, easy to spot under my fairly milky skies at Bortle 6, and with the light behind the camera, it's probably closer to Bortle 7, so <laughs> I might turn that off actually for a moment and uh, see if it improves the view. In hindsight, I would have set the tripod a bit higher, but uh, <laughs> it's fine. When I was younger, I could see, I swear I could see a little bit of color in, in the ring nebula. I could see a hint of kind of bluey green in it. I think that was when I was back in my thirties that I could uh, see that. What other objects I can swing around to see? Well, the Milky Way is stretching up behind me in Cassiopeia. I can just about detect that it's a bit more milky in that section of the sky. Let's have a look over there, actually. Swing the telescope round and have a look. Switch back to the 25mm, I think. If I can find it. Yep, that's it. I can feel which one it is because it's the one without, it's the plus lie piece without the rubber eye cup, which I broke when I made a smartphone adapter. So I'm just sweeping the Milky Way. I wonder if I can get down to the double cluster. If you've got a manual mount or a basic motor driven mount like I've got here, something like Sky Safari on your phone is just a absolute godsend for hunting down objects it's because you can just point you your phone up at the sky and see what's what yeah so i should be able to get the double cluster which is just below cassiopeia don't think the tree's in the way of that so let's give it a go if i can't find it in a 25 mil eyepiece then i need to invest in something else a bit wider oh yes Oh my word, that is amazing. I've got the double cluster beautifully framed in my 25mm plus all. You can see slightly different tones to various stars in the clusters. Some more yellow tones and some more slightly bluer tones. I'm trying not to overuse the word pin sharp, but 
it really does sum it up. I think the last time I had cluster views like that, it was with a 4-inch refractor, actually. It was with a, a Celestron ED-102, and uh, which I, for some crazy reason, sold. I mean, that that was that gave fantastic views of clusters, and so is this Takashi. I'm assuming that the Takashi has got the slight edge because it is a more expensive telescope with fluorite, proper fluorite glass in it. So it's got a better refractive index slightly. Another little tiny faint satellite going through there. Um, oh, satellite going through the middle there again. It's hard to image nowadays with all these satellites flying about. Okay, so I've noticed the moon's rising over in the east, just between two houses. It's quite low, so I'm just going to grab the setup and bring it over, and we'll try and uh, have a look at the moon. Unfortunately, the moon's now covered in cloud, but I can still see it. Still worth a look. They should pass the clouds. Oh, it's nice through the finder scope. <gasps> Flipping egg. Even with the cloud in front of it, it looks amazing. So this is with the 25mm plus all. The diagonal I'm using is a William Optics dielectric. Maybe a prism, a good prism diagonal would be better because it, you know, theoretically it scatters a bit less light at prism, a good prism compared to a mirror, but this has got a very flat polished mirror in it, 1 12th wavelength mirror. So I don't think this is going to degrade the image too much but I could benefit from some better eyepieces, which I will invest in, I think. Uh, yep, the clouds are still going by, but they, they should pass in a couple of minutes. That's my stomach rumbling. No time for that now. Beautiful view of the Terminator. Really gives it that 3D pop. Oh yeah, it's clear of the cloud now. Let's feel what the focus is like. It it does there's no problem getting really sharp focus, it just pops into focus. I think we should pump pump up the magnification a bit. Let's pop the 12.5 in. focus for that eyepiece. Yeah, with the moon being very low down, you can see the the seeing's a bit unsteady. I'm at about 60 times with this eyepiece. I'm just not sure the altitude's going to take a huge amount of magnification because we're above houses, so the heat from people's houses is going to be rising up. There's a rooftop just below the moon. So, yeah, not ideal conditions, but it's still putting up a lovely view of the moon. Just about fit the full moon in this eyepiece, a bit of room around it. I can't keep all the names of the lunar features in my head but the Mare have got a little bit of texture to them. You can see different shades on them. A few of the features, like striations. Uh, it's difficult to verbalize it really without an in-depth knowledge of the names of the moon and without illustrating it with imaging. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, Saturn's up yet, actually. I might pop round the corner and see how we're doing for Saturn. See if, see if that's risen up yet, if it is. So I think it might be worth taking this round and having a look. Okay, so I've gone around the front of the house. Uh, Saturn's most likely behind the houses opposite me. 
so it's not risen high enough yet. I'm not sure it will rise high enough tonight, but as you can see, the clouds building up. It might be game over for tonight, but that's a pretty decent first light, I think. We got, wait three weeks for a clear night, but we did get a nice view of the Ring Nebula and near, near Vega in the Summer Triangle. Uh, a nice view of the moon, and the double cluster was pretty stunning as well, but the, I think the highlights for this four inch refractor were definitely the moon and the double cluster. It renders stars superbly. And um, I look forward to sort of increasing the capabilities of this telescope. Um, I'll be looking at what eyepieces to get for it, to improve it. And uh, hopefully we can do a bit of imaging of the moon and the planets through this uh, Takashi as well. Which I'm also looking forward to doing some comparison videos with some other telescopes like the, the Skywatcher 200P. And I've uh, just been on a team building exercise with first light optics who I work for and uh, took some equipment back from my observatory the the gem 45 mount and the Stella Lyra f4 imaging Newtonian's gone back and in its place I've picked up a different mount to test and a different uh, telescope to test so be able to test this against a, a few different telescopes now but yeah that's to come and uh, yeah stay tuned for that but I think as you can see the clouds are putting an end to things now so I'm gonna start packing away and uh, I've got a good feeling because I've managed to get out and use it after waiting quite a long time to use it so a special thank you to my channel members and my patreons until next time take it easy and I hope to see you on the next video